Seven ways you're wasting your money. That's this week on Think Tank Tuesday. Hi, this is Paul Potratz, and welcome to this week's Think Tank Tuesday. Boy, I know that's a big question. What are the ways I'm wasting my money? Well, if you hear it all the time, 50% of my advertising's waste, just if I knew it, 50%. So let's really run down the checklist, and let's talk about seven, as far as seven huge budget killers, the way you're just like throwing money away. The first one is planning the month in the month. When's the last time you did that? When's the last time you had your ad agency call you up or somebody and go, hey, Tom, what do you want to do this month? What's your incentives? Seriously, come on, stop planning the month in the month. The reason that you're probably doing that is because you're price, price, price. Price doesn't sell cars, okay? I mean, it will close the deal at the very end, but it doesn't create awareness. So stop planning the month in the month. Build a strategy and stick to it. Okay, number two of how you're killing that advertising budget is watching other dealers. You're listening to the radio, watching their TV, looking at their print ads, looking at their bill. Whoa, there went a squirrel. Do you see that squirrel? I'm teasing. I'm talking about you being ADD and saying, oh, wow, look, look what Johnny did up the street. He's selling all these cars. Let's do the same thing. Let's undercut them by $10. Stop it. That's ADD. Make your plan. Decide to be a leader. Stop being a follower. Makes sense? So stop watching what the other dealers are doing because you're being reactive instead of proactive. So there's your number two. Number three not having a plan. I mean, isn't this what this is all about? I had, but I got to get to seven, okay? So do you have a plan? Do you have an advertising strategy? Do you have a strategy for new cars? Do you have a strategy for each individual model? If your sales efficiency, let's say you're a Ford dealer and your sales efficiency is 108% in the F-150, why in the heck are you still beating the drum? Let's put $20,000 towards F-150 and try to sell three more F-150s. Pick those cars you're not performing well on and promote those. So Get a plan, get a plan for everything. New car, used car, service, everything. Your social plan, your social strategy, everything. You gotta have a plan. Break it down and implement the plan. Make your plan, work your plan. The next one, number four. Are you ready? You don't have USP. That's right. What am I talking about? Unique selling proposition. You're a Ford dealer, Toyota dealer, Chevy dealer, whatever. How many competitors do you have in the market? Are you guys all like, oh, 149 a month? Is that what you're doing? Stop it. Get unique. What do you have that's different than anybody else? Well, you do have some stuff. The thing is, the other dealers are not talking about it. If you're a Toyota dealer, take that Toyota Care package, rebrand it, repackage it, throw a couple little things in there that are extra, like if you have a car wash, if you're going to do tires for life, oil changes, whatever. Throw it in there. Get your unique selling proposition. Are you ready? Wake up call. Being in business for 50 years is not a unique selling proposition, so throw it out the window. Having a president's award, not unique, throw it out the window. Think about as far as the customer, what's important to the customer where they're gonna to wanna to do business with you. So unique selling proposition is number four. Are you ready for number five? All right, well, wait, wait, something doesn't seem right here. Brian, something doesn't seem right here, does it? I'm giving to all of these people watching this video every week and they're not really giving to us. So start giving. What I want you to do, share the video, like the video, tweet the video, do whatever it is you do, forward the video. Come on, show us some love, comment. I wanna see your comments. Tell us what you want us to talk about. All right, let's go to number five. Number five, you're counting clicks. Your search engine marketing company is going, hey, we got 17,000 clicks. Stop counting clicks so much. Yeah, clicks are important that people are coming to your website. That definitely helps. But look at your conversions because that's a money killer. Oh, I got all these clicks. But where are the clicks coming from? Is that SEM company, are they buying your dealership name and saying, oh, wow, well, I got all these clicks. But is people clicking for your name? Eh, that's a money killer. That's killing your budget. So start measuring the conversion, put a plan in place to start getting conversion up, okay? Number six is not having clear expectations. 
Expectations is critical. If you're doing digital marketing, what is your expectations? Well, what I want you to do is go to last week's video where we were talking about traditional and digital and all that stuff. But you've got to have the proper expectations because I don't care what you've been told over the years. Oh, digital, you can measure it. It's so trackable and all this. You're holding digital to a much higher platform than you are radio, TV, newspaper, direct mail, and billboards. And I'm saying, yeah, you should. You should definitely do that but set up the pro proper expectations because a digital strategy doesn't happen overnight. You've got to build it, build it, and build it, and it gets better over time. It's kind of like wine. But anyway, so not having the clear expectations. And not only in your digital strategy, but what about your salespeople? What about your own as far as your conversions? So what I want you to do is quit looking at what everybody else does and quit looking at the manufacturers and when they're saying, hey, this is what you should be. No, bullshit, okay? No. Look at where you're at, because every market's different, every dealership's different, we all have our own as far as little ecosystem, okay? So look at where you're at and say, let's improve from it constantly. That's what you wanna do. And then the last one, the final one that I think that we all fall to, and it's kinda, of, oh, there went the squirrel again, is that shiny new nickel that you get somebody that comes into your dealership, that somebody calls you on the phone, you go to a 20 group or whatever, hey, great idea at the 20 group, and then you come back and you disrupt everything. You turn everything upside down and you forget about the things that you were doing that were working, even if you didn't know they were working, and you disrupt everything. You keep on trying to reinvent, 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 trying to find that shiny nickel, that silver bullet, whatever you want to call it, stop it. So something I want you to do, actually I want you to do a couple things that's going to really help you to start to understand. And if you look this up and kind of share it in the comment section, something magical might happen. Okay, so there's your warning. But anyway, I want you to study attribution modeling because most dealerships are focused on as far as the one-dimensional attribution model. And also look at as far as multi-channel funnels. This is really, really important because you'll do a direct mail drop, you'll sell all these cars, it's a great, and you're like, oh, the direct mail did great, let's do it again. Well, that doesn't always work so well. So attribution modeling and multi-channel funnels. Check it out, and I think it's gonna help you kind of slow down on trying to dis disrupt everything and try to reinvent because the magic of advertising isn't really that magical. It's really consistency and being different. That's this week's tip, and I'll see you next week.